So I finally feel like I have enough cruiser games in 10.0 to actually make a guide or at least talk about uh, the captain skills for cruisers. And to be honest, I really think that cruisers haven't really changed all that much. Um, there's a few new builds, there's a few old builds that are gone, um, but for the most part, the standard cruiser build is basically the same. Uh, there's not a lot here that's changed, and that's kind of disappointing considering they put all this work into uh, changing everything up, but um, the standard build of putting concealment on your ship, taking superintendent to get more heals, to get another radar, that kind of thing, taking adrenaline rush, um, all these things are pretty much the same for your standard kind of cruisers, like uh, a Salem, Des Moines, Wooster, Zhao, uh, Hindenburg, like all these, all these ships have remained basically the same. Um, Venezia as well, Henry has possibilities for a different build that we'll get into in a little bit. Uh, but just know that cruiser performance I don't think has decreased or increased all that much. They're just kind of they've just kind of stayed the same. A lot of these skills um, don't really change the way things play. They're just kind of carried over from from the old builds. They're just called something else. So gun feeder instead of expert loader. These types of things. So I think if we're talking about a standard build um, on a pretty all-around ship, I think Hindenburg is probably one of the best all-round ships. It's kind of good in most scenarios. And you can see the build I'm running on it here. I'm taking Heavy AP and Heavy HE as the new skills alongside Eye in the Sky. Because there's not really much here to take extra. Grace the Gears is a pretty good skill, but honestly for a Hindenburg and most most cruisers don't really need the extra turret traverse. There's a few that will. Um, you could take uh, Torpedo Speed on some cruisers, like maybe a Yoshino, um, but pretty rare pickup as well. Um, consumable Specialist, this is an okay consumable, or an okay upgrade for your consumables, um, but it's not all that impactful. I think Gun Feeder is the most impactful tier 1 skill for all of the cruisers. Um, incoming Fire Alert is an interesting option, considering Priority Target is now a tier 2, so... If you don't have room in your build for priority target and you feel like you need that uh, heads up when people are targeting you or shooting at you, uh, incoming fire alert is a decent option to change there. And last stand, this is a pretty nice one for cruisers that tend to lose their rudder or engine a lot. Um, York and Hipper come to mind, losing their engine all the time to a little bit of high explosive. Um, but in my book, Gun Feeder is by far the most impactful tier 1 skill, and that's why you're going to see it on basically every single cruiser build that I play. Um, Pyrotechnician, this is Demo Expert, just nerfed. 1% uh, is, in my mind, not worth a 2-point skill, so that's why I don't take it at all. Um, I don't think any build I have takes it. Torpedo Tubes Reloading Time can be good on certain ships with good torpedoes, like a Yoshino or a Zhao. Uh, maybe you want to do it on a Minotaur, since maybe there's just not a, another good skill to take. Um, that's kind of possible for ships like that with decent torpedoes, but still probably not all that worth it. Uh, consumable enhancements. This one can be good. 10% um, longer on radar is the real one that I'm looking at. Um, smoke generator consumable time as well can be good on ships like Venezia. And the engine boost one obviously can work wonders on a ship like Henry. But this is still um, not as impactful in my mind as something like Eye in the Sky. Having the option to take a spotter plane whenever you need it is so, so, so nice. The problem with spotter plane, I've always found, is the cooldown is too long. And when you want to use your spotter plane, it's never available um, after the first time you use it. And oftentimes, I find when I do use my spotter plane, I actually don't really get value out of the full duration because the enemy ship I'm shooting at either leaves my spotter plane uh, radius um, or they come within my standard gun firing range anyway. So I'm not getting much use out of Eye in the Sky later on into the consumable's life. So sacrificing half the consumable life um, where I have spotter plane up 
to gain the ability to use spotter plane more often is just a great skill and i think this is one of the coolest um buffs to cruisers is this eye in the sky one from the captain at least priority target going to a two-pointer um i just don't use priority target on most of my builds so this is a costly one for i think a lot of people that rely on things like priority target um but like i said you could run incoming fire alert as an alternative if you don't have enough points for it uh aa is okay this patch um i've found if you run both aa skills you can shred some cv planes if you get lucky they still have to eat a lot of flak in order for you to uh, shred some planes but an aa build petro for example is pretty solid uh, because it has long range and a lot of flak that's hard to dodge so it is possible to run these aa builds i'm just choosing not to on most of my ships because honestly i it doesn't seem to do all that much unless you're running something with crazy good AA, like a Petro. Um, you need a solid starting point, in my mind. Survivability Expert, still here. Same skill. No different. Um, really, I'm only running this maybe on a ship like a Zhao. Um, I haven't even spec'd out this commander yet. But a ship with low HP, right? 40,000 HP for a Tier 10 cruiser is not a lot. So... Um, Potentially getting that extra like 4,000 uh, HP or 3,500 HP is an okay upgrade. Um, but there are more impactful ones. Superintendent, obviously, still a very, very, very good skill. Um, you get the unnerfed version, battleships, of course. Uh, their heal superintendent has gone to a fifth tier or a fourth tier skill. Whereas cruisers get to keep the old one that was uh, far better, in my opinion. Uh, heavy AP shells, this is an interesting one. You just get a flat 5% increase in your AP damage. Um, and that's a neat skill to have, honestly. Uh, three points, it's not cheap, so it does come at a cost there. But there's no like downside to uh, to taking the skill out, outside of the three points. So I, I like this skill. You can take it on ships that you want to shoot a lot of uh, armor piercing out of. Uh, ships like Stalingrad, Petro come to mind, uh, Des Moines perhaps, Hindenburg, because Hindenburg does have amazing armor piercing. Adrenaline Rush, this one is part of the nerf, but this is to every class where Adrenaline Rush has just gone up to a tier 3, and that's probably a good change because it was universally the skill I picked on every single build in the game as a tier 2. So it's probably good that it's a tier 3. Uh, a, a nerf to that skill was probably needed because it was just too good for a tier 2. Torpedo damage plus 15% is an interesting one. Uh, I haven't gone and run a torpedo build Minotaur or Yoshino or Zhao yet, um, but I think it could be a funny uh, build to run because 15% torpedo damage on something like a Yoshino or a Zhao that already does like 20-23,000 damage from a torp, uh, yeah, that could be pretty fun. I haven't messed around with it, but an interesting meme build. The problem is um, the most optimal way to build something hasn't really changed all that much. Heavy HE and Sap Shells. This one is a good skill um, and synergizes well with the top grade gunner if you're going for that uh, lighthouse build, as I and a few others have been starting to call it. Um, where essentially you give up all concealment and you take all the DPM skills that you possibly can. It's an interesting build, and I'll talk a little bit more about uh, the pros and cons of that later. Um, but this skill is interesting. You get 5% more damage out of your HE shells than this skill gives to your AP shells. So you get a full 10% extra on the HE. But at the cost of 15% concealment, when your ship has greater than 149 millimeter. Uh, caliber. So a ship like Colbert, for example, can take this skill and it won't receive the concealment penalty, which is which is a good a good change because some of these ships are um, they do struggle a little bit more without something like AFT, where you could increase the range of small caliber guns. But I'm glad that that AFT is gone out of the fourth tier row because it nerfs ships like Smolensk down. By quite a lot um they're forced to run range mod instead of reload in the upgrades and that means the dpm the fires all that stuff is far uh, easier to deal with and um if they do decide to go with the full dpm build they have no range so it's easier to 
um, stay away from them, basically. Um, top grade gunner. This is a very interesting skill. You don't take it for the secondary battery reload time because the secondary build cruiser is just dead completely. Um, I wish that it was still around because I just got the Siegfried and I would have loved to try and secondary built this ship with these uh, with these secondaries that are on. They're just Kerfers. Uh, secondaries so it would have been fun but uh, alas they got rid of that build um, reducing the number of options that you actually have um, outnumbered I think this skill is just bad I have been trying to look for situations where it would be useful but it's incredibly difficult because to have it active you need more hostile ships visible than ally ships in your gun range and to get that you have to go on a flank literally all by yourself and you have to go really far on that flank because your cruisers have really good range so if you're on one side of the map you could still be 15 kilometers away from the bulk of your friendlies and they would be forcing uh your outnumbered skill to not activate you have to be outside 20 22 18 kilometers of your teammates and that's really not a good spot to be because this is a game where helping your teammates is the way to win after all so i don't think this is a very good skill um it's possible that running this on a henry and just trying to tell your team to go all to go to one side and then you go to the other side maybe it would work um but for four points it's so situational that i don't think it's a very good skill Radio location, this hasn't changed. Um, I really don't take it on any of my cruisers. I understand the uh, the DD hunting style can run a radio location. Uh, this is also good in competitive, but for just a randoms build, I don't run it at all. IFHE being a four point skill, I mean, that makes sense to me because this can be an incredibly useful and strong skill for the right cruisers. Um, and by that, I mean, I'm talking about ships like Nevsky, where you only have 30 millimeters of pen with your base shells. But if you were to take something like IFHE, it would get you up to that 37 or 38 millimeter range, which means you can pen battleships all of a sudden. And that's very strong. So I'm glad that's a four point skill. Um, I don't think this is a good Nevsky build. I think I was trying a lighthouse build. Spoiler alert, I don't like the Lighthouse build all that much. <laughs> I have been trying it a lot, but I don't really enjoy it, the playstyle all that much. But I'm, I am liking that IFHE stayed as a 4-pointer and didn't go down to a 2-pointer like uh, it did in the Battleship tech tree. Um, concealment, still the same thing. 10% better concealment for 4 points. And AA Gunner. Uh, I think... Running the two AA skills together makes the most sense. Uh, on their own, they're okay, but together, they can really boost your AA to something somewhat fearsome, I think. So that's kind of the skills to go over so far. And I want to talk a little bit more about the Lighthouse build. It is, it is not easy to play at all. You can see here with something like a Nevsky, I've gotten into 18 kilometers of concealment, and that's simply to activate this, where you get 8% better reload when there's an enemy ship spotted within your standard detectability. So as soon as there's an enemy detected within 18 kilometers of my ship, then I get 8% better reload on these guns. Now, the problem with that is you basically end up being at max range all the time and you're not able to make as creative plays. Now this is a very extreme example, but I am running a lighthouse build on a Colbert with reload mod. So we have basically no range, but we have even better DPM than we had last patch. So uh, yeah, it's fun to try these things, but the problem is you're always chasing people is the way 10.0 works. I think most of you, uh, if you've played a few games at higher tier at least, um, running these uh, very DPM focused builds costs you so much in concealment that it's really, really difficult to uh, make any plays really outside of using islands. 
And I got lucky on this game with a map that has some favorable island cover. And I'm not gonna lie, the DPM is really, really, really nice with a ship like Colbert or anything. That extra 8% on top of the 12% reload mod is pretty disgusting. And this North Carolina will die relatively quickly. <laughs> um, so it's not like these builds are bad. Um, that's the thing. They're not bad. They're just... They're just not flexible enough. They work so well when people push into you. And they're so bad. They're so bad when people don't push. And the majority of games these days are people not pushing right now. And that's the problem. When you build a cruiser, you want to be a flexible ship. That's what your ship is designed for. It's not the Alpha Strike King like a battleship, very specialized. It's not the Concealment King and Information Gathering, Capture Control, Torpedo Strike kind of king like a destroyer is. You're the flexible jack of all trades type of thing, for the most part. And building your ship like this, well, it can be really fun and interesting, which to Wargaming's credit, they have made an interesting build here um, with the full DPM, no concealment. I just don't think it's all that viable to run the majority of the time. If you're looking for the least frustrating, the most uh, fun games you can have on average, um, this isn't the build for you. It's fun to try, but you're going to run into games where you just have to chase people. And this game was an example of that, where in a Colbert, open water chasing um, people to the back of the map is kind of the name of the game here. It's not that the build is bad, I want to say that again, I think I've said that a lot, but I think that it's just not flexible enough. And on ships like Des Moines, you've seen me run it, uh, Henry I've done it, um, it works a little bit better, but it's still not quite flexible enough. When you have concealment, you could sneak up to people, you can get into more interesting positions. Concealment is so strong that I'm actually running it on my secondary battleships over things like uh, fire prevention, because getting into good positions without being detected is a lot of the times more important than something like fire prevention or something like 8% DPM. So running these builds, I don't think there's much of an issue with it, but I think that you could be running something better for the majority of your games. So 8% DPM is good in scenarios like this where you're right in the face of everyone. But the problem is getting into this position is almost impossible when you're running the full lighthouse build. That's the big issue, where you struggle to even get into these high impact positions like I'm in right now. Um, in a Salem or Des Moines, this is an amazing position to be in, where you're holding a corner for your team, and you're there to help with radaring destroyers, killing DDs, that kind of thing, stopping rushes, and generally it inspires your team to push in a bit more. And in this game, we really needed this flank because you can see my team gave up C. And in a cruiser, with your good concealment, you're capable of making these pushes and making these plays that can win your team flanks. If, you, if your team gives up an entire side of the map, you have to win the side that your team actually went to. That's just how it works. Otherwise, you get bottled up in a corner of the map. You can see my team is very much on their way down here already. Uh, they're all basically pointed towards where we're at. So we have to win this flank. And having a cruiser with good concealment getting into positions like this wins you these types of flanks. If I didn't have concealment and I was running the full lighthouse bad concealment build and I was camping at the back near maybe where Vermont is at currently, we would have lost this. Well, we probably would have won this flank. We probably would have won this flank. But it would have been way later, and it would have given the enemy team time to basically get a stronghold in B, and it would have been very unlikely that we would have come back in this game. But as it stands, I was able to push in with this much better concealment. And that's really what concealment affords you. It affords you to make plays. 
Sure, you might not have quite as good of a DPM once you get there, but I think making being able to make these plays matters more than straight up DPM. And I understand if you disagree because, I mean, DPM on cruisers is kind of their thing, um, but I, I just think concealment is just that important in a cruiser build. So giving it up just to get a little bit of DPM, I don't really like it. The other big issue is when you run a full DPM build on a cruiser, you run into the problem where you don't have enough range because you're playing farther back, because you're spotted earlier, you're um, playing at longer ranges, so you're more incentivized to take the range mod. But if you take range mod instead of reload mod in the upgrade slots, well, you've just given yourself 12% worse uh, DPM. So you're giving up 12% DPM from the upgrade module just to get 8% DPM from your captain skills? That doesn't really make much sense. So if you're running the full lighthouse build, uh, in my mind, you should probably be taking um, reload mod. And that makes it really, really difficult to play because you have short range, but really good damage. Um, I personally would prefer reload mod plus uh, concealment or even range mod plus concealment if it's a ship that requires it. Like something like a Zhao, for example, basically requires you take range mod and concealment. But you can see with a really good ship, I mean, Salem's really strong in tier 10 when you are able to make these kind of plays with concealment and getting your DPM into close range engagements. It's an amazing brawling cruiser. Um, this is what you can do. And I don't think this is necessarily possible, or it's not nearly as easy to do when you're taking that full lighthouse build. So that's my thoughts on the lighthouse build and more of a reasonable build, I think, involves concealment. Um, I don't think top grade gunner is worth taking over something like concealment, especially when instead of these four points, you could put maybe another three points into heavy AP shells, that kind of thing. So you'll see that on a lot of my ships, I am not running top grade gunner. Concealment is the way to go. And on a Petro, you can see I'm taking AA gunners, that kind of thing. Um, Nevsky I haven't played since I've done the the full um, the full lighthouse build attempt. Um, on my Des Moines, I have been trying to run a bit of a lighthouse build with concealment. This is a decent option. You can run 13.9 kilometer concealment instead of the full 15 or so you would get with a Des Moines. And you can get that bonus some of the time. You'll notice that I am still running the reload mod. I think you, if you're going to take top grade gunner, you do want to run reload. So it doesn't make sense in my mind otherwise. Um, so this build is somewhat viable on certain ships, I think, where you can run top grade gunner. Heavy HE and Concealment. I, I truly believe Concealment is the skill that you should just be fully, fully, fully rushing towards. Um, ship like a Wooster, I am, you could see, running IFHE with all of the damage upgrades and Superintendent. Um, this is to pen battleships. On a ship like this, getting that battleship pen is very, 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 very strong. Um, of course, my next skill would be Concealment, but you'll notice that it's just a bit too expensive at the moment. Um, I do think of Extra Heal and Adrenaline Rush is more important. 12.5 Kilometer Detect is usable for something like a Wooster, but I think that these throw Concealment entirely away type of builds are not all that great. I really don't think that they're that good, except maybe on a Henry, but even then... You can see 20.3 kilometers. You're always going to be detected, and I don't know if that's the strongest way to play the ship. It would be the strongest if everybody just pushed into you all the time, but that's not usually the case. Usually, you have to be making plays and being active and pushing in, um, at least towards the later game in a cruiser. That's kind of kind of what you have to do if you want to win games, and this makes it really, really difficult to make those kind of plays. Now last, I think I want to talk about the super cruisers or battle cruisers, whatever you want to call them. These ships no longer have 
fire prevention. And that's that's a bit of a bummer for ships like a Stalingrad, um, which are big, easy to hit, and get lit on fire, basically like a battleship, let's be honest. Um, so what I've d decided to do is I've decided to play them more passively. I'm not playing my Stalingrad's bow in, I'm deciding to play them a little more passively, and I'll, and I'll show you that in a little bit. But the build centers around being able to switch between high explosive and armor piercing with gun feeder. Um, a little bit of AA help uh, is very nice on a Stalingrad um, with your defensive fire, that kind of thing. And realistically, none of these other skills are that useful. So um, you do have to watch out for these AP dive bombers, especially when you're in a heavy cruiser or a super cruiser, battle cruiser, these, those types of things. Um, so having that extra little bit of AA, superintendent for the extra radar and heal, I think that makes sense. AR for the extra reload and concealment. I think that's pretty standard from before. But you'll notice I am running the heavy AP shells. Makes sense. You know, this is a very AP focused kind of line. Um, super cruisers in general. Um, so that does help. But I am running heavy HE. And that does make my concealment worse. So 17 kilometer detect right now. That's kind of bad. But what that does is it gives you the ability to do a lot better when you, you're forced to switch to HE. A lot of times, at longer ranges, people are just going to stay angled to you now. Um, there's less of the take your ship on a flank and decide, and then get the broadsides of people. That doesn't happen quite as much. So using that HE a little bit more on some of these ships can work into your favor. You'll see I'm still running Propulsion Mod to do the speed juking type of thing, Concealment, and Reload Mod. Um, it's pretty solid. I think I'm actually not... I think I ran out of camo. I've been trying to... Uh, I've been trying to use up all my consumable camos, because it's just free experience and free XP credits, all that stuff just sitting there. So I've been trying to use it up. So it actually you get 16.4 kilometer Concealment, which is usable on a ship like this, um, because you do have pretty solid armor. Um, so... Super cruisers did get a little bit of nerf in tankiness, but their damage potential has gone up a little bit, I think. So it kind of distinguishes them a little bit more from battleships, making them into their own kind of more cruiser-oriented uh, playstyle than the tanky battleship type. So playing your cruiser in these type of engagements is difficult. You have to be patient with these heavy battlecruiser types. Um, you can't just go full bow-in kind of tank mode anymore, I don't think, um, because the fires will kill you much faster. Your AP is still very deadly at long range with a Stalingrad, obviously, and now your HE has been buffed too to be usable, uh, I think, in situations where you're fighting a, you know, bow-in battleship at these longer ranges. But you'll notice I'm still trying to get these broadside hits onto cruisers and battleships alike because that's kind of what these heavy cruiser types are all about but i'm not bow in i could be bow in in a situation like this but i'm not you'll notice i'm playing it quite passively uh just letting the battle come to me you know not trying to force anything early on later on in the game you'll see that i can push up more but I truly believe with these heavy battle cruiser types, you have to know how to use pilots in this meta. You're going to get thunders that shoot you from across the map with high explosive all the time. You're going to have to deal with pushing in invites people to shoot you. Um, that's just how it works. So when you're pushing in, you have to know that you have a save point or a checkpoint is how I like to use it. You remember in... Remember in older games, like, uh, the one I remember was uh, Crash Bandicoot when I was a kid. And you'd get these checkpoint boxes where it was a save point. Whereas, you know, if you you were safe there for a little bit to uh, get to the next, start the next kind of level type of thing. Or next part of the level. And that's what these islands often are used as, in my mind. Um, so, I'm pushing in here. This game is basically lost, you can see by, by my team's position. But I'm going to try and hold down this flank a little bit longer and push into the A cap and stall it. But the problem is we, uh, we're we going to be fighting like four or five ships. <laughs> so you have to learn how to use islands intelligently. 
And what these islands can do is they can force people into one versus ones against you. And that's really, really, really good. So I'm trying to stall the cap here. Um, that's my initial thought, but I mean, I'm getting burnt down pretty good here. You can see how long the fires last on my ship. And you can see that obviously there's no fire prevention. So we're much more vulnerable to HE attacks. So these battle cruisers have been nerfed a little bit. Um, but for the most part, you're not really wanting to run these as a tank battleship anyway, in my opinion, even before. Um, you were looking to use them as long range fire support um, and as a decently difficult to take down push at, in the late game. You're still a cruiser after all. And I think that taking that fire prevention has, has done a good job of making these battle cruisers more distinct from just being miniature battleships um, that just have better dispersion for whatever reason. <laughs> um, so you can see we do die relatively quickly even in a Stalingrad which is I think known to be pretty tanky. Using islands like this is important and you can see I'm relatively safe here. I stopped and healed up for quite a bit and what it does is it forces people to push into you one one v one and that's what you have to do if you're trying to play these more forward positions in a ship like this you need to force people to come at you one on one so playing a cruiser is a lot harder in this patch i think um than it was previously because people aren't pushing as much and i've talked about this a little bit in my des moines video that I put out, you know, semi-recently, and that's where you need to learn how to use these kind of checkpoint-style islands to push in, and reading a map and all that stuff is, is very, very, very important in that regard. So, for cruisers, I think they're still very strong, but the play style has changed simply because battleships aren't just willing to YOLO in and donate all their damage like they were in previous patches. That's kind of the that's kind of the main difference in my mind. After playing quite a few cruiser games, it's not that the class has changed that much. It's not that the captain changes have been all that different. The big thing for me in my mind is that other people and other classes of ships are playing differently. So that's impacting your game as a cruiser, which I mean, it sucks because I would prefer that people are able to push in and brawl it out as most of you know i do enjoy that kind of play style um but a lot of people don't know how to brawl as shown by a venezia that just pushed in and went broadside on to us <laughs> um he does end up killing us so fair trade i guess it's the end of the game but uh yeah cruisers are different and they have to be played different so as a final thing to hammer out my recommended cruiser build, I think this is what it would look like for most cruisers. There's exceptions, obviously, but I think these are the most impactful um, skills you can take on your cruisers. And this is what I'm probably going to be running on most of mine. Um, there will be changes made depending on if the cruiser just doesn't have high explosive, for example, or if I'm trying to run some different meme builds, maybe try a torpedo build eventually. Um, but this, in my mind, looks like it would be good in majority of situations for a cruiser player. Um, you can see it is a, it, this is a full 21 point. Um, this captain only has 20, so in order for, you to, for me to master this, I would need to just pick a single, uh, a single point skill. But I think the order that you would do this in, in my mind, is, it would look, it would look something like this. I think gun feeder most impactful type of skill for single point and then if you have a spotter plane option available to you eye in the sky is very good um if you're not running into where you're having a spotter plane definitely run aa or priority target that would make sense to me and then for the tier 3 upgrade i still think at least in tier 10 you're probably gonna want superintendent um on most of your cruisers to get that extra heal you get four then or to get that radar type of thing. Um, it's possible that you run AR first, or if you want to, the heavy HE. But I think to run heavy HE, you're definitely going to need at least a 10-pointer to start running your concealment down to get it somewhat reasonable. Now, 
I think that would be a reasonable 10 point commander for most things to start with. Um, or something like this. Or if you're th someone who thinks, ah, I don't really need the extra heals, that kind of thing. AR is just a great skill. If you're on 50% HP, you get a 10% reload buff. Um, that's very, very, very strong. So that would be a very, very good 10 point commander as well. And then I would probably go for a superintendent. And then I would probably go for heavy HE. Generally, HE over the heavy AP shells, simply because you're going to be using on majority of your cruisers HE more often. And when you are switching to AP, you're looking for those Citadel hits. You're not looking necessarily for the, the full pen, kind of 5% more full pens. You're, you're switching because it's AP close range. You're just looking to get those Citadels in. So that's something you can take kind of as the final three-point skill in my mind. And then after that, you can run, you know, some of these other skills that are helpful, but not um, as mandatory. That's kind of what the cruiser build looks like to me as a general one. This will change depending on if you're running into a ship with, you know, maybe it's got better armor and good AA and you're looking to push in. Maybe you don't take, maybe you don't take heavy HE because you want to maintain your concealment on a ship that pushes really, really well because concealment enables you to push with your cruisers. And you can go check out my uh, Petro video if you want to see more of that kind of playstyle in 10.0. It actually works really, really well to have a ship with really good armor and really good concealment um, to be able to push in. And you don't necessarily want to ruin that with heavy HE. That's kind of the thought process there. So each one will be a little bit different here and there. And you can see when I don't have Eye in the Sky, um, I'll take something else. Eventually, this would become uh, a tier 4 or 3 skill once I have a 21-point commander. But for now, that's just kind of what I threw it into. The main ones to look out for are the tier 3 and tier 4 skills. Those are the main impactful ones. So that's kind of how I am building up my cruisers for now. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. And thank you all for watching. Have a great day.